Um, and so, as Katie said, my name's Aiden, um, and I'm a cloud engineer, or who am I? Classic Linux, Unix jokes to start uh, tech presentations, but who I am is I'm a cloud engineer at NebulaWorks, and what we do is we're a consultancy uh, that specializes in cloud technologies, as you guys probably guessed. Um, and cloud, cloud engineer roles, a lot of sysadmin stuff, a lot of DevOps responsibilities as well. And what we do at NebulaWorks is we um, take clients who do want to either do um, greenfield or, or brownfield deployments um, in, in preferably cloud native spaces, and we use our transformative methodology uh, to transform their organization and allow them to adopt more agile processes um, around cloud technologies and uh, open source tooling. Yeah, and so I'm a, uh, a certified Kubernetes administrator. Kind of explains the motivation behind why I wanted to do Kubernetes the hard way using Terraform, and I'll explain what Kubernetes the hard way is in one sec. Um, and uh, basically, this is just a test you take that, that proves that you know Kubernetes and that you know your way around um, KubeCuddle and, and, and all that other fun uh, Kubernetes, <laughs> all the other fun Kubernetes topic, topics as well. So here's a link to my GitHub. Um, I'd like to note that I am a GitHub Pro. I'm not sure this badge just showed up. Um, I'm sure some of you guys have it as well, but uh, but pretty proud of that. I'm not sure why um, that, <laughs> that showed up, but uh, GitHub Pro, whatever that means. Um, cool, so that's a little bit of background about me. Um, and so Kubernetes is a hard way before we continue on. It's just this, a, it's, it's a tutorial that this famous guy named uh, Kelsey Hightower made. Um, and he made it so that people can actually go through each of the steps and figure out all the, all the things that are required in order to bootstrap a, a Kubernetes cluster from the ground up. I think there's like 50 plus um, flavors of managed Kubernetes out there, but um, he kind of saw the need, uh, hey, we need people to actually understand um, what Kubernetes does, how it works underneath the covers. Um, and so he made this tutorial that outlines each of these steps right here. Um, and the tutorial is kind of a de facto standard. Um, it's, it's a very good tutorial in the, in the DevOps space, so much so that it, that it has almost 14,000 stars. And so I'm going to explain a little bit. I, I took Kubernetes the hard way, um, and I, I made it under Terraform. Some of the, my motivations for doing that, for actually using Terraform to, to bootstrap a, a, a Kubernetes cluster, um, using the steps that are outlined in Kubernetes the hard way, uh, was because I needed to prepare for the CKA, uh, the Certified Kubernetes Administrator exam. Um, and so I figured, hey, I, I can build this out with Terraform, right, which is our, our go-to IAC infrastructure as code tool here at NebulaWorks. Um, and if I do that and I kind of front load my work um, by, by writing out all this code that will eventually bootstrap this Kubernetes cluster, when I get to the point uh, where I can finally run a Terraform apply, um, and, uh, and, and actually have a cluster. Um, then I can tear it down and spin it back up and, and hack on it and destroy stuff, create stuff, all that. And I was preparing for it, or I was, I was creating it in preparation for all of us here. All of us have taken the, um, all the engineers, almost all of them, I should say, have taken the uh, CKA exam and passed. And so I, I wanted to create uh, this cluster with Terraform so that I could then hand them my code. Um, they could do some basic configuration um, so that they can have their own individual project in our GCP account, um, and then they can spin up their own Kubernetes cluster as well. And what we actually did was um, we had uh, each other, we had our SSH keys on each other's instances so that we could go in and mess things up and, and edit configs, and we'd then have to go back in and, and try and figure out what went wrong, which mimics the actual uh, CKA exam environment. So the... Uh, the steps that are done in Kubernetes the hard way, um, right here, and I'm gonna exit out of tabs as we go. So this one's done. Um, but the steps are basically installing client tools, uh, provisioning compute resources, we'll, we'll go over each of these. And then here's the corresponding Terraform code that I made um, in order to actually uh, simulate each of these and then um, basically get to the end until we have uh, a DNS server running and, and uh, or, uh, um, a DNS cluster add-on using core DNS in the Kubernetes cluster, and we can then start to um, deploy pods and other Kubernetes objects. So I'm gonna walk through each of these um, on the command line. Um, so my directory structure for this, uh, for this um, project, I basically have um, all the scripts that I use 
Um, as you know, Terraform is, is somewhat rigid around scripts. Um, you can use file provisioners and remote execs uh, to run them, um, but it doesn't uh, quite have some, some of the functionality like, like Chef does where you can do it in place and totally understandable. It's just a constraint of the tool. Um, and so what I did was, was actually use um, these scripts right here. Um, and the, the names are pretty self-explanatory, right? Uh, we have installation scripts, we have configuration scripts um, that generate um, configs as well. Uh, we have scripts that generate uh, certs and all that, um, that basically get put onto the instances as they spin up and then run by one final uh, remote exec, which is just a, 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 a Terraform command that basically says run all these scripts. And we'll get in, into those in one sec. Um, and then we also have, oh, sorry, Tmux. Um, we also have a bunch of, uh, because, because um, it is all the certs that we're going to use in order to encrypt each of the services are self-signed. Uh, we have a lot of uh, certificate signing requests and, and JSON configurations for those CSRs um, in our search directory as well. So, um, so that's our kind of the, the um, how the directory structure is laid out right here. It's also important to note if you're doing um, organizational uh, wide Terraform to have your, uh, your directory organization um, under lock according to best practices and, and keep it consistent as well. It'll save you um, a lot of headache. So, um, so our prerequisites for, for, for this step is basically just the using the, the G Cloud tool, um, which we have right here. Um, that's fairly simple. Um, there are some client tools that are needed as well in this, uh, in this demo as well. There's Cloudflare's uh, SSL, like Swiss Army Knife tool uh, that basically allows you to create the self-signed certificates that we're going to use in the lab. This tool called CFSSL JSON. Um, and then also KubeCuddle, which is the uh, binary that allows you to interact with a uh, Kubernetes API server, and you can point it at, at various Kubernetes clusters as well. And as you can see right here, we have all of those tools installed as well. So, um, so that one's done. Um, the next step in this tutorial is provisioning compute resources. And so what this entails is um, obviously networking details around, um, around the, the instances are gonna, that are going to be spun up. You need to spin up a default network. Um, and, and subnets as well, um, create firewall rules, create network routes that you can um, basically load balance into the, uh, into the, the pod CIDR address ranges as well. Um, so a lot, of, a lot of networking details um, and a lot of uh, um, details around the, the instances as well that are, are actually spun up using the G Cloud uh, command line tool. And the G Cloud command line tool is great, but this is really where Terraform shines. Um, because we have, um, instead, of, instead of running these commands and then kind of forgetting where, uh, where everything is, right, not actually having it under code, um, Terraform comes in and allows you to define those things um, used in code. And so right here in this definition, um, we'll just go over this. Let me set, um, sorry, set. Uh, we have our, our controllers, um, which are just the, the, the nodes that are um, going to be used for our control plane. Um, and so this is just a fairly standard Terraform configuration right here. Um, the, the kind of the one difference is all of the file provisioners that we use for, for our, all of our bootstrapping scripts and our, and our uh, PEM files and, and all that. Um, and so we have a ton of file provisioners to get those scripts onto the machine so that we can um, dynamically bootstrap them once they're spun up. And then, sorry, I'm going a little fast here. And then the final detail is... Uh, um, is this final remote exec right here, where we basically take all of these scripts, make them executable, um, feed in uh, metadata for the actual project that we need to um, that we need to actually uh, uh, feed into the instances to bootstrap them successfully, um, and then uh, once basically all these commands run, uh, the instances will be successfully bootstrapped, and we'll have a working Kubernetes cluster. Um, the, the, uh, the workers right here that are defined right here, uh, basically the same thing, just uh, standard Terraform configuration for Ubuntu 18.04 instances uh, with a lot of, of uh, file provisioners and then one final remote exec to actually run all of the bootstrap scripts uh, individually. 
And then I'll just show you guys some of the bootstrap scripts right here. Um, here's the one for the controller, right? Uh, so you couple Terraform, which uses HTL, HashiCorp configuration language. Um, and then you, you couple them with these installation scripts right here that, that install CFSSL, kubectl, etcd, right? All downloaded as single um, binaries. Um, and then do some provisioning for uh, the, the rest of the Kubernetes control plane. So, um, so that uh, is compute resources. Um, networking resources that are created. Uh, we have a static IP that fronts a load balancer um, that balances to the, uh, to the pods, um, or I'm sorry, balances to the, uh, to the um, control plane. Uh, we have external firewall definitions, right? Internal firewall, all that. Um, load balancing, forwarding, um, the, the network definition right here, right? All of these individual things that we'd have to actually uh, create via the G Cloud command line can be automated away using Terraform with HCL. Uh, we have our subnets, um, network routes, um, other things like that. Uh, we don't need to go too much into that, but basically Terraform will handle all these networking details that um, Kelsey Hightower used the, the G Cloud command line utility to do right here. So all these details are, are done away and actually reproducible with the help of Terraform. So, um, so that step is done. Um, the next one is actually provisioning uh, CA and generating TLS certificates. And so I was um, trying to make this kind of natural, but, uh, but we have uh, some of the steps that are required to actually get a Terraform apply running, which I, I want to run in the background for you guys is uh, we're going to actually create our CA. I, um, I made it into a script, so that way it's uh, you know, automated away. I don't have to manually go through creating a CA every time I want to um, redo my certificates or, or do a demo for the Hashi Days talk. Um, so we're going to create our CA. We're going to then generate our certs from there. So you can see we have individual certs that are being generated for Kubernetes components. Um, and you can see all of the... Uh, all of the PEM files that have been generated from there, um, the actual, uh, the, what's going to actually be used for the encryption. Um, and then one other step is to actually, I'm gonna skip ahead a little bit to show you guys, um, but we're gonna generate a config. Um, we're going a little bit out of order here, um, but we're gonna generate a config that's actually gonna be used for in-place encryption of the uh, Kubernetes cluster. So um, I'm going to show you guys a Terraform apply really quick just so that that can run in the background and we can actually see the end result by the end of this talk. Um, so we're going to run a Terraform apply. Hopefully the demo gods are nice to us. Um, let's see, no immediate failures. All right. This is looking good. All right, we're creating the network. We have the... Um, we have the, uh, our Google Cloud Console open right here. These should be creating instances in one set. Since that's running in the background, sorry about the, um, the, uh, the mismatch of steps right there. Um, so what we are going to do is since we generated our CA and generated TLS certificates, we're gonna move on to the next step. And that's generating uh, Kubernetes configuration files for authentication. Um, that is done right here. Um, it's basically using kubectl actually on the instances um, to generate configuration files for the, the individual Kubernetes components. Um, right, so if we look at what file we're viewing, uh, we're going to be generating configurations for the kubelet, um, for the kube proxy, right, for the controller manager, the scheduler, and then we're finally at the, at the lowest um, in this file right here. Oh, that doesn't really help, does it? <laughs> In uh, one sec, in uh, this file right here, um, we're actually going to be generating the admin configuration that we're going to be using um, to uh, to point kubectl, uh, kubectl at our cluster that we spin up. So this was the step I skipped to, basically just creating the um, the configuration uh, for the data encryption right here. Uh, fairly simple step of the tutorial, we just create a, um, a key, uh, pipe it to base64 and get a, um, and then shove it into a YAML and that acts as, as our, our encryption key for the whole cluster. That way it can be uh, encrypted at rest. So, 
Um, the next part is bootstrapping the etcd cluster. If I go back to my original presentation, we're about right here, um, right? We covered all some of these some of these scripts that are used in conjunction with the Terraform code um, to actually bootstrap this Kubernetes cluster. And so etcd um, is the next part right here. Um, and that's configured, that's actually shoved up. Uh, this, this script right here is shoved onto the instance using a file provisioner and a remote exec as well to actually get etcd going, um, right? And then verify that basically everything is working. And so just a quick background on etcd, it, it's basically the stateful component, the distributed key value score, store that's across the control plane um, and, and stores cluster data as well. So um, after that, uh, we use Terraform to, to bootstrap the Kubernetes control plane, um, which is right here in this ginormous file. Um, so it, all of that is done here is, is basically configuring uh, the control plane's components, right? The API server. Uh, we downloaded manually, we manually downloaded the, the binaries that are used for things like the API server and the, uh, and the controller manager. And this file, all this script is basically responsible for uh, configuring the services um, that are going to be used for um, for, for things like the API server and the controller manager um, and etcd as well. So just some configuration that we do via the script. Fairly standard things. Um, finally, some, some systemd starts for, uh, for, for things like the API server, controller manager, and the scheduler, and then Nginx, which acts as a load balancer as well. Um, next is bootstrapping in Kubernetes worker nodes. Um, so same thing here. Uh, the, the, the components that are used on the worker nodes are the kubelet and the kube proxy. And so same thing, we're running those as background services. This is actually a, a script that's run, uh, that that's, gets onto the instance via a file provisioner and run via remote exec. Um, so fairly standard here. Here's where we configure the CNI networking, uh, our container runtime, which is container D, um, and, uh, and the kubelet as well. So fairly standard. Um, Oh, sorry, the Zoom panel's getting in the way. Let me move it. Okay, awesome. So after that, uh, we have to configure kubectl because hopefully our cluster, oh, still creating. Um, so as you can see, the remote execs are still running. Um, hopefully that'll be completed soon. Um, but then after that, we can configure um, kubectl and basically get underway um, and, and we'll have a, a working Kubernetes cluster as well. So let's see, hopefully this completes soon. All right, still creating. Okay, so let me go into, um, gotcha. So let me just re-go over, I guess, some of the points that I already covered. Um, and let me actually dive more in detail into the, uh, into the, the compute resources as well. Um, so what I'm going to do is go up here and actually go over the, uh, the, the worker nodes. So we, we already went over, we're just kind of rewinding a bit. We already went over the, the HCL, um, that, uh, that is for our Terraform that for the actual, um, uh, Kubernetes controller. And so for the worker, it's basically the same metadata, right? The same, uh, boot disk size, um, Fairly standard configuration here, IP forwarding. Um, we have three for the workers, right? It's a, it's a three node cluster, three um, controllers and three workers, um, a machine type, a name, our network interface. Um, how we're actually configuring our pod cider is through metadata. So each of our, uh, each of the, the nodes has attached to it an actual pod cider address range that it creates pods and attaches IPs to that are actually in this pod cider address. And then similarly to the, uh, to the controller instance, we have these, these file provisioners right here. Things like adding SSH keys so we could get onto each other's instances. Um, uh, PEM files for, for encryption, right? Um, various configurations, uh, the generation of, of client certificates, right? Um, generating kubelet configurations, other things like that. So, um, and depending on your use case, you might not be able to use actual file provisioners. And so if you're in something like Amazon Web Services, um, something like that, and you, you actually need um, 
you actually don't have SSH access or, or something, you just have AWS API access, you can do something like, like big uh, AMIs, I call them AMIs, but uh, big AMIs and get configuration in that way as well. Um, it's just kind of less flexible, but, um, but enables you to kind of bypass the SSH route. So there's, there's a lot of workarounds there. And then one final, um, yeah, one final step is the, the final uh, remote exec that runs each of the scripts, similar to the, uh, similar to the, the controller. Cool. So we have a working Kubernetes cluster now. Um, sorry about that little delay. And so we're gonna configure kubectl for remote access. And real quick, it looks like I have, can you share your Teamux configuration, please? All right, I like that question. Um, <laughs> yeah, it looks pretty cool, right? <laughs> so um, yeah, I, I definitely can. So it, it's at my, uh, my GitHub link. Um, uh, here, I'll give you a second to copy this down. GitHub.com, uh, Aiden Souls, right there. A-I-D-A-N-S-O-L-E-S. -E and I'll come back when I finish up, I'll come back to that link as well. Um, so we're going to jump to configuring our, um, we're going to configure kubectl now. Um, so in order to do that, we have this um, script right here, basically runs some gcloud commands, um, enables us to point um, kubectl at our, at our cluster that we just spun up. Okay, so we're going to clear our screen. Um, and then we're going to run just a simple command to see whether um, it worked or not. All right, wonderful. So, so we just got the, um, the, the pods in all namespaces. We can get our component statuses as well. We see that our individual Kubernetes components are, are up and running healthy, right? And then we can actually, um, oh, sorry. Um, so we can, we can see um, that those, those are running successfully as well. So, um, so our kubectl is then configured. Uh, we automated all these steps away with, with, uh, with that script. We got our component statuses. You can even do something like kubectl get nodes just to verify that I actually did spin up uh, three worker nodes. Um, so I wasn't faking it. I swear this works. Um, <laughs> then we can move on to the next step. Uh, provisioning network routes. Uh, we actually already covered this in um, in in the um, in the the Terraform code that we went over for for actual networking. We went over some of those routes, um, and those are right here, right where we did our static IPs and external firewalls. And if we see right here, um, this is where we're actually provisioning network routes into our into our pod siders, right here. So. That's the Terraform code responsible for that step. Um, the next step is basically enabling core DNS um, in the, the actual cluster. So I'm just gonna show you guys that step right here. Um, let's see, so let's do I have SSH right here, let me SSH. And we're just going to run um, this command right here. Prove that we enabled core DNS. This might have to be okay. Wonderful. So because it's item potent, um, let's see. I believe. Huh. I think that worked. I should have said sync panes is off. Hold on one sec. There we go. All right, that worked. It's just because we ran it at the same time. So let me. So what we can do um, is basically run a, um, so we're configuring core DNS during this step right here. Um, and so if, if we run a busy box image, um, we can then do a name server lookup, um, actually in our, in our busy box image using kubectl and, and show you guys that core DNS, uh, which is a part of Kelsey Hightower's tutorial right here, um, that it actually worked. So we're gonna do that really quick. Show you guys that. We're going to get all pods. All right, so we have a, oh, sorry, Tmux. <laughs> and I'm not the best typer. Am I right? Pinky is, uh, is famously unreliable. So, um, so what we're going to do is we're going to run kubectl exec. Um, 
Let's look up Kubernetes. There we go. So we have our Kubernetes uh, name server, or we have our core DNS server working because our, our name server lookup uh, command actually returned the, the, the Kubernetes DNS server as well. Um, so that was that step, configuring the core DNS uh, server as well, which is, is simple. It's Kubernetes, right? So it's actually done uh, via YAMLs. Everything's done um, in YAMLs. Um, so that, was, that part was, was fairly simple. And then finally is, is uh, a smoke test, which we, which if you notice, we actually um, skipped right here. We skipped a smoke test, uh, but basically just performance testing our Kubernetes cluster. Um, didn't want to do that, didn't know if we'd have enough time. Um, and then cleaning up, right? Because this is one of the reasons Terraform is so awesome, is because cleaning up, because Kelsey Hightower, who might I add, is also a GitHub pro, um, he actually spun everything up with gcloud, and so in order to, to tear everything down, he has to manually delete instances, right? Do all these manual deletions, um, and, and there's a potential, right, with, with spinning up infrastructure manually that um, you might lose track of things. Uh, even, even us, we try to put everything under Terraform uh, in IAC in general here at NebulaWorks, but we forget about instances as well. Um, but the nice thing with, with Terraform is that you can just run Terraform destroy, um, and because you're, you're using IAC, it will go, go ahead and just delete your Kubernetes cluster as well. So, um, so that is the end of my presentation. And while I destroy this uh, Kubernetes cluster that was spun up um, kind of in, in, uh, in, in the format of Kubernetes the hard way, I will take uh, any final questions that you guys have in, in the final minute. So and I'll go back to, uh, go back to my... Um, my GitHub page also, because I know someone asked a question about that. So, okay. Thank you guys so much.